So in today's video, uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to put on the guards on this DuraHeat DH2304S kerosene heater. And then we're going to show you how to uh, properly fill it up with kerosene. So if you're unboxing your kerosene heater for the first time, whenever you open the box, you've got your directions right in here. And we're going to go over all that. But if you've already lost the box, then we're going to go over that information in this video. So when you open your box up, you'll have an instruction manual here on top and then some C-sized batteries and then a packet of, of little screws. Go ahead and unpackage this real quick. And then once you pull that piece of cardboard out, then you can see down into the box and you can see that there's pieces of cardboard. You need to just go ahead and remove those. So when you pull the heater out of the box, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have several pieces. This is your top. Then you're going to have your top guard that fits on top of that. And then you're going to have your two guards that fit all the way around. And then you're going to have your handle. You're going to have two C batteries, two screws, and your siphon pump. So you want to start out by mounting the top plate that goes on the top of the heater. And you'll notice right here on this side, there is a, a little round hole that's kind of notched out on each side. It's got a little wing on it. And then there's one on this side. And you can see in... The reason there's a hole there is your handle is going to fit through there. And the way that you know where to line this up is there is an arrow here on top. You just take that arrow and line it up with a hole on each side. And once you get it lined up, you'll, you'll see that that arrow is pointing to that hole. And you'll know it's installed right, so it just sits on there. So I said in the beginning that you've got two guards, one that goes on the very front and one that goes on the back. Well, what you want to look for is the one that has the notch cut out in it right here. And you want to put the notch going downward. And it's going to fit right there. And the reason that it's got that notch is so you can clear that door that opens right in there. Start with the one that has the notch. And then what you'll want to do is come right over here to the side. And you can see that there's a couple little holes right in there. And then there's a couple of holes right in there in the top hole you can see that right there it just slides in and then right there you can see it slides into the bottom hole and then i'm gonna rotate the heater around and you can see that it does the same thing over here you just want to take and bend it out a little bit and at the same time you just slide it in both holes very very simple then you grab your second piece. This is your second guard. This one here doesn't have any notches. And the way that you know that you have it in the, stalled in the right direction is these little arms will be pointing down. And so you will install it the same way. You'll come over here, hook it into that hole right in there. You can see right there, you just hook it in. And then down there at the bottom, you hook it into that hole. I'm going to rotate the heater around. And you do the same thing over here. Once you get your guards installed all the way around, it'll look something like this. You can see it covers all the way around the heater. And then once you get it installed, you'll want to take and get your carrying handle. And what you want to do is take and you want to line it up. Remember, I told you earlier in the video that there was a hole on each side. Well, that hole is uh, now going to be filled by this little rod. And what you'll have to do is kind of work it in on this side. You can see right there. And then you'll have to come over to this other side and you'll, you'll pull that rod open with your hand. Just takes a little effort. And then you can see that it fit in that hole right in there. And then when you turn it sideways, it pulls in and locks itself into place. Now, once you've got the handle inserted into the kerosene heater, remember it's got to go through this outer casing and through this little top plate so this doesn't come off. So the handle actually secures this top plate on and connects it to the to the main body and to the handle. So when you lift it up, uh, it's all connected as one. So now that we've got the front and back guards on, 
We're gonna go ahead and put the top guard on and the way that it installs is there's a, a hole here and there's a hole here on the back and then there's a, a threaded uh, piece there and then a little piece here and you just lay it down and then you've got two uh, little screws and you're gonna just get it going with just your fingers first and it is a Phillips head so once you get it started then you want to come to this side so once you get them started with your fingers just go ahead and tighten them up with a Phillips head screwdriver and you ain't got to go super crazy tight with these you'll notice when they start snugging up that's plenty enough tight so after you install the top guard now you're all finished your handle is already installed in there and I'm sorry it's making a little squeaking noise. It sounds like fingernails on a chalkboard, but you'll get that, that noise. It's just from metal touching other metal, but it's completely installed. It's very simple. It shouldn't take any more than five or 10 minutes to read through the instructions and install it. But now you should be able to pick it up all as one unit. So the only thing that's left next is to add the, the two C size batteries. And if you turn the kerosene heater to the back, you'll see that there's a little access door and you just push this little piece of plastic over. It's kind of spring loaded. And then you want to look on the inside and it tells you which direction to install the battery. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but they're going to be installed just like this here. Let's push them in. And then the top battery is going to be just like this here. And then once you get your, your batteries put in there, then you want to just close your little access, access door and you should be good to go. So for the next step, uh, that is you want to take this and go outdoors with it. Uh, under no circumstances should you fill a kerosene heater indoors. You know, there could be an accident. You might maybe start a fire or something like that. So always take it outside. Take the kerosene heater outside. Take the kerosene put it outside this is just for demonstration purposes there's no kerosene in here but I'm going to show you how to uh, fill it up you just want, want to loosen the cap and it's got a little chain right here so you don't lose it and then you just want to open your kerosene jug here and make sure you're using an approved kerosene container and once you remove the cap you will take your siphon you will take the straight end you will put it down into the jug and then you will take your flexible end and put it down into the kerosene heater. You want to tighten the top here and then you want to start squeezing it. And once you squeeze it, there'll be a suction that pulls the kerosene into the heater there. And you'll want to make sure that you don't overfill it. You can look down uh, beside right in there and you can see that it's filling up. While you're fueling the kerosene heater, you can look over here on the fuel gauge and it'll show you here on this side that is empty. Right there in the middle, it's halfway. And then on this side, it's full. So when you're pumping it up, you can definitely see this, this gauge start filling up. Uh, you don't wanna overfill it or you'll be coming to clean it up with, with paper towels and all that. So make sure that you, you watch it and don't overfill it. And then when it starts getting close to being full, then you wanna loosen the knob here on top. And once you loosen that little knob, that stops the flow of, of the kerosene. So when you loosen the knob and you stop the flow of fuel, make sure that you don't pull this out till all the fuel is drained out of that. And you wanna shake it a little bit. And then a lot of times I'll take and turn it up. And then if there's any in the tube, I just push it back down in there and lift this at the same time and that way you don't spill any. And then you want to take and put your cap back on there. And then right in here is a notice that tells you that you want to use a 1K kerosene. And it said that in a lot of places that it's dyed red. I can't remember if it is here in Tennessee or not, but uh, a lot of places it did say in the directions that they, they dye it red so that you don't know that you're using the, the correct kerosene. Some of it is also clear uh, that I've seen as well. So. so it's always a good idea to keep a couple extra C batteries uh, just in case that uh, yours is dead. And, uh, but if, if for some reason that you, you're, you've got dead batteries, don't panic because you can still wipe the heater. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First thing you wanna do is just open the door. It just pulls open. 
And then next you want to take this uh, knob here and this is the wick adjuster knob. You want to turn it clockwise. And when you turn it clockwise, what is happening is the wick is pushing up. And the way that you can see the wick is you want to lift up right there on the burn chamber ha handle. And there's a little, little handle right in there. And then when you lift it up, you can see right inside there, I don't know how well you, you guys can see that, there is a, a white fuzzy wick right in there. And you just want to take a match, preferably some of the longer matches, a little bit easier, but you can do it with a, a short match as well. But you just take and light that wick right in there. And then once you light the wick, then you lower this knob down. So you'll slide this burner side to side and it'll self-align. And once it's self-aligned, then you should be good to go. After the stove heats up to operating temperature, you definitely don't want to touch that, that little handle or that little knob right there because it is very hot. And then once you get it adjusted and you see that everything is burning correctly, then you just close the door. And also make sure you don't leave any portion of the match inside there because it can cause some smoldering or it can cause some misalignment of that burner in there. So you want to make sure that you get every piece of that, that match out of there so it don't cause you any, any kind of problems. So if you have any questions about this procedure or uh, any anything that I didn't cover, make sure you refer to the manual. That should have everything that you'll need to know about this. And uh, just, just for quick reference, uh, one thing that I do want to point out is right here, this is the manual shutoff. So if something ever did happen, you can always shut the stove off by mashing down on this button. Whenever you hit that manual shutoff button, it takes and it pulls the wick down out of the burn chamber and it extinguishes the, uh, the flame. So just always remember that that is your safety. All right, so next uh, we're going to talk about the igniter plug for the heater. And let's say you've replaced your batteries with new ones and the stove won't light. There's probably a good chance that the igniter plug is bad. And uh, the way that you replace that is first thing you want to do is open this little cover. You want to remove the two batteries, close that cover, and then you'll see right here on the, the heater that there is a large Phillips head uh, screw and you want to remove it and it'll, it'll be a pretty big screw set it aside and then you rotate the heater around and there'll be another screw on this side we'll go ahead and remove it and you just want to set it aside as well so next what you want to do once you remove the two screws is you want to lift the case just like this and just set it aside. All right, so once you lift the top assembly off the heater, you're, you'll see this area here. And what you'll wanna do is just lift this piece off. And that way, whenever I lift that piece off, I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right in here is your igniter plug. And it looks very similar to like a little light bulb. It has a little filament on the inside of there. So, I don't know how well you guys can see it. I've got a little dental pick right there. You can see right at the end of that pick, there is like a little filament from like a light bulb. And the way that this works is those two C batteries uh, light, heats up that filament. And then once you take and mash the igniter button over, that filament goes over towards the wick. Now, if you're wondering where the wick is, it's, it's down below until I turn this knob and it raises the wick up. So now you can see that whenever I mash that lever over, it brings the igniter to the wick so it can ignite it. So if for some reason you're, you've switched the batteries out and you're bringing the igniter over to the wick and it's not lighting, then there's a good chance if that filament's broken right there that you have a bad igniter. So what you want to do is take the igniter and turn it to the right and it should uh, pull out. Uh, and yes, you, you should turn it clockwise to remove it. 
I know that's backwards from a lot of, you know, righty tighty lefty loosey, but clockwise to remove it. So when you go to install a new igniter plug, it is a model DH-31 type B and you'll push in and turn it to a counterclockwise direction and that will install it. So it says in the directions to uh, test the ignition by raising the wick. And you'll turn this knob clockwise till it stops and that raises the wick. Then you'll move this lever over to the right and whenever it stops, you'll want the, uh, the igniter plug should be with one to two millimeters of the wick when the ignition lever is fully engaged. Reassemble the heater and replace the batteries and you're done replacing that igniter. All right, so next we wanna talk about adjusting the wick. Uh, the direction says after lighting the heater, it is important to check the heater flame within the first five to seven minutes of operation. During the first five minutes of after ignition, the burner chamber warms up and the flames will become visible at the top of the burner. So basically you'll look in through this window, you'll be able to see the flames. It says these flames will gradually build up. After five to seven minutes of operation, you should use the wick adjustment knob, which is this one here, to obtain the proper flame height. The proper flame height is of no more than a half inch at the top of the burner. So you kind of look inside that glass there and you can uh, see if the flame is too tall and if it's more than a half an inch then you can lower it down and the way that you would lower it is it says right here you turn it counterclockwise to lower it and it pulls that wick down just a little bit and it shortens that flame and uh you know it, it keeps the, the wick from being too high and it lowers that flame as you continue to operate the heater, the temperature of the heater and the temperature of the room will continue to change. As the heater warms up, the kerosene in the tank will vaporize faster and this re could require adjusting the wick adjuster down in order to maintain the desired half inch flame height. Therefore, it is necessary to continue to monitor the flame height and make adjustments using the wick adjuster to keep the, the proper flame. It is recommended that you, you are supposed to check the heater every 30 minutes in order to keep the proper adjustment uh, because periodic adjustment is required. Next, we're gonna be talking about wick maintenance. It says how to check the condition of your wick. Check the wick often. It says if the wick is hard to light using the heater's ignition system, if the wick is hard to raise or difficult to adjust by turning the knob, if the wick fails to drop completely when you push the shutoff knob, if the top of the wick is stiff and hard like a bristle brush, it is time to dry burn your heater. A wick that is in good condition will feel soft to the touch and will light easily and extinguish quickly. Note, poor fuel or fuel contamination with water will also turn the wick hard. All right, now next is dry burning your heater, removing carbon from the wick. Dry burning your heater will cause a strong odor. For this reason, it is best to dry burn your heater outdoors on a day that is completely calm and windless. If it's too windy outside, you can consider a porch, a breezeway, or a, another room with all the windows open to disperse the strong odor. Step one, with your fuel tank nearly empty, burn your heater without refueling until the flame starts to burn out. Then raise the wick to its highest possible setting and leave it there until it burns out completely. Wait 60 minutes, then relight the wick with a match if necessary and allow it to burn out again. Once the heater is cool to the touch, remove the cabinet and brush the top of the wick with an old toothbrush or other stiff bristle brush to remove any remaining ash. A canister type vacuum cleaner may be useful in order to remove this ash. Step two. The first step should remove most carbon and your wick should feel softer to the touch. If any part it still feels hard, you can use small pliers to pinch these hard spots and break the carbon into pieces. After doing this, replace the cabinet, add fuel, wait at least one hour and light your heater. Conduct carbon removal, dry burning within five to seven days after your first use of your new heater to reduce carbon buildup on the wick's burning surface. Afterwards, dry burn your heater anytime the wick appears to be hard. Check with check your wicks often, dry burn your heater and remove all fuel from your heater at the end of each heating season. Now to extinguish the heater, what you wanna do is 
grab a hold of the knob and then mash down on the manual reset and then slowly let go of your grip on that knob until it retracts that wick and it will extinguish the, uh, the flame. After you uh, have mashed the manual button down and the spring is not turning the knob, then what you want to do is just open the door and you want to look on the inside and confirm that there is no flames and that'll let you know that the fire has been completely extinguished. All right, so I hope this video was informative to you. And you know, I, I know I skipped over a, a lot because there's a lot of information here in this uh, instruction manual. So make sure that if you have any questions, refer back to this. And uh, I just want to say I'm not liable for any of this. I'm just trying to make an informative video to kind of help you guys out. If you have any questions, sometimes the, the manual is uh, not always uh, a perfect representation of what what I can show you visually, you know, and it's easier just to, to watch the video and, and learn that way for some people. And so that's why I'm going to make this video, but I'm not liable. Uh, make sure you read your manual, manual. I don't want nobody getting hurt or burning their house down or doing nothing crazy like that. But uh, I hope the video helped you out and uh, taught you a few little things to, to help keep you running all winter long. So until next time, see ya.